This video will walk you through the configuration of the Top Server DMP Ethernet and Serial Driver. First, click to add a channel. A channel represents a communication medium from one PC to one or more external devices. A channel can be used to represent a serial port, a card installed in the PC, or an Ethernet socket. A channel and a device driver are closely tied. Only devices that the selected driver supports can be added to this channel. Give your channel a friendly, meaningful name. I will call the example channel DMP3. First, let's go over the configuration of the DMP Ethernet driver channel. Click Next and choose the DMP Ethernet driver from the Device Driver dropdown. The Enable Diagnostics box can be left unchecked for now, but you can always go back and check this after the channel has been configured when troubleshooting communications. Click Next to specify whether or not this channel should be included in a virtual network. A virtual network allows devices from different channels to behave in a round-robin manner by limiting data transmission to one channel at a time. Creating a virtual network can improve and control radio modem communications as well as control the amount of bandwidth being used. Click Next and choose the appropriate network adapter you want to use for communications. This can be left at default if using the default adapter for this operating system. Click Next to review the right optimization settings. These should be left at default when setting up your project. If you find you need to change them later, you can always go back and modify them after the channel has been configured. Click Next to review how the driver will handle non-normalized floating point values. This can usually be left at default. Click Next to configure the IP address and corresponding Ethernet settings here. Click Next to specify the timing settings for the channel. We recommend leaving these at default as well. Any of these settings can be changed later if needed. Click Next to review the channel configuration and choose Finish. You will now see your configured channel in the project. If you are communicating serially, you will notice there are different settings in the channel creation. Let's take a look at those. Instead of configuring Ethernet settings, you would specify the appropriate COM settings here. If your PC has a modem installed, it will be available for selection here if you wish to use dial-up modems for communications. An option to use Ethernet encapsulation will also be available. Enable this feature for use with serial to Ethernet converters, terminal server devices, and some cellular radios. During serial configuration, there will also be a step to specify whether or not to report port level communication errors to the top server event log or force the serial connection to close when not in use. These can usually be left at default. Now that we've taken a look at the channel creation, let's move on to creating a device. First, click to add a device. Give the device a friendly, meaningful name. I will call the example device Multitrode because I will be making a connection to a Multitrode device. Click Next to review the scan mode. We recommend leaving this setting at default. Click Next to define whether or not to use Auto Demotion to take unresponsive devices out of the polling cycle for a specified period. We recommend leaving this setting unchecked during the initial configuration. You can always go back and change this if you find you need it. Click Next to specify the communication settings for the device. Make sure to enter the correct master node and slave node addresses for your stations. In the DMP protocol, the slave may send a synchronization request to the master to synchronize its clock. There are two options, LAN and serial. Only use LAN for a hardwired Ethernet connection. To get the true time for serial, radio, dial-up, or even wireless Ethernet, use serial. When you use serial, the master will make a delay measurement, meaning it calculates lag time, then sets the time in Object 50 Variation 1 to the lag corrected time. The remaining settings can usually be left at default. Click Next to specify how often each event class will be pulled for data changes. DMP has different event classes that you may use to classify points. You may set each of these to a maximum of 24 hours or set it to zero to turn off event pulls. Click Next to specify the integrity pull interval. We recommend this to be no more than once per hour. However, for most applications, very infrequent times of 8 to 24 hours or more is sufficient. Integrity pulls can also be used on a master restart, when the slave comes online, or when the slave encounters an event buffer overflow. Click Next to specify whether or not to enable unsolicited messaging. The DMP protocol allows the slave to update the master with data changes without a pull from the master. This is fully controlled by the slave, and most slaves allow you to configure any delays or item deadbands for unsolicited messages. The deadband settings can prevent you from receiving every data change, which can be good or bad based on data reporting needs and bandwidth limitations. Click Next to specify the event playback settings. 
To assure retrieval of all buffered events, the client must have an update rate that is at least twice as fast as the playback rate. If the client's update rate is slower, it effectively overrides the playback rate. Click Next to specify the tag import options. The selected tags will be imported during automatic tag generation. Click Next to specify the authentication settings. This can be used when the master must determine if it is communicating with the correct outstation. Click Next to specify file control settings if desired. The file control feature set is intended to be used as a mechanism for transferring log and configuration files between DNP masters and slaves. Click Next to configure the advanced settings. The default operate mode defines how writes occur. There are two options, direct operate and select then operate. If your device has points defined as select then operate, you must first write a boolean true to the .so subtype for that point before writing to the value subtype of that point. With direct operate, you write directly to the value subtype. The default behavior is direct operate, which many if not most slaves support. In normal operation, after writing to a slave, a DMP master will perform a feedback pull of the slave. We have found that this causes problems with some slaves. The setting allows you to turn off this feature. Each DMP point has a dot timestamp subtype that stores the timestamp of an associated event. You can choose to display this in UTC notation or in your local time format. Click Next to review the device configuration and choose Finish. You will now see your configured channel and device in the project. Tags can either be accessed dynamically from your client application or using a static address in the server. Looking at our slave profile for the Multismart controller, we know that if we wish to address the value of the 50-second analog input, we would use 30.0.51.value. 30 defines the analog input object, 0 defines the default variation, 51 is the index of the 50-second analog input, remembering that indexing starts at 0, and value reports the value of the input. In relation to the Multismart controller slave profile, this would report the current level of well 1. Likewise, if we wish to know the timestamp of the event reported on the third binary input, we would define the address 1.0.2.timestamp, where 1 defines the binary input object, 0 defines the default variation, in this case date, 3 indicates the fourth binary input, once again with indexing starting at 0, and timestamp tells us to report the date time of the event value currently reported by the dot value subattribute. In the multi-smart, this would give us the time of the last station over voltage fault status change, where dot value would show us the status of the fault. By launching the quick client, we can make a connection to the device and see the values for these items. Information regarding any configuration settings or optimization suggestions not explicitly mentioned in this video can be found in the top server help file. To view the help file, go to help server help in the configuration. Configuration settings pertinent to all drivers can be found in the server help section. For information on a specific driver, navigate to the desired driver and click launch driver help. This concludes our configuration of the DMP3 drivers. As always, our support team is available to help you every step of the way. We offer a wide variety of support options including phone and email communication and can also set up a remote session to walk you through the configuration process. If you find you have questions or need any assistance, please do not hesitate to contact us.